Hey everyone, it's Joe Dezaeus here from The Automator, and today we're going to cover how you can create a fully editable list view and much, much more. Um, we we came, a client had this need that they wanted to be able to edit a list view, and actually, is this why don't you show the list view here and, and talk yeah, about exactly. the problem? Yeah, so if I press this, I get this list view, which is a normal other hotkey list view. Which are um, amazing, don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, they, they're, they're perfect for a lot of things. yeah. Yeah. Very fast. Now, Here's the thing, he wanted to be able to open certain type of files that he had um, into a list view, and then he wanted to edit stuff in here and drag and drop rows easily. So basically, it's not that it's impossible. Basically, you do have the option of editing a list view, but you can only edit the first column by default, and you cannot drag and drop rows easily either. Now. The list view controls are very old and they work with messages. So you have to send messages to them and then you can make it so that you could edit any specific field that you want. And you can also make it so that it detects when you're dragging and dropping rows. So it's doable. It's also, just... also, I'll say like, and I've seen them, there are some where you could change the color of the font and different things. Yeah, yeah. You it's can like, make a lot it's... of interesting stuff with them. But they're very complex and old. Well, not only that, but if you code that yourself, you're going to have a lot of little bugs, right? Yeah. So it's going to take you a little while to code that. You have to understand really how to send the messages, how to structure the messages. Which, which one of the really important points of why why we, as Ace and I, love list views is we're not building them. We're relying on Windows that has worked through all the bugs over the years, right? Exactly. And theirs are super reliable, right? So right. they're amazing for displaying data, for sorting data, you know, stuff. Great. Right. But after as that... Soon as, yeah, as soon you know, as you start doing more complex stuff, like... Yeah. Selecting, you know, like you can select them and, and hit a button or double click and get contents out of them. Great. Works right. Great. Awesome. Perfect. But as soon as you start trying to drag and drop, you try to edit inline... Um, those kind of things get a little bit tricky. And there are some libraries out there. I remember seeing two or three libraries out there for version one that allowed you to edit the fields in line, but they are not 100% reliable and they're really old. And they even say they're not reliable, right? Right. The same, the same library says like, hey, uh, I had some issues with this and that. And because again, this is really complex. So then we, we, we especially because of the time frame that the client needed the work, we said like, why don't we leverage something that exists? So there are some libraries out there for grid controls is what they're called. But again, they're clunky, they're old. And we said like, some hey, of them cost money, right? Most of them, like it's very rare for you to find a free grid control because of how hard it is to code. Okay. So they're so hard to code that the most of them, I, I, I you basically cannot find free ones uh, very often. But we said like, hey, but we have a grid control that we have programmatic access to it, which is Excel, right? So Excel is one of the best grid controls out there. Right. Yeah, you can do so much, so many stuff with it. And we say like, okay, is there a way that we could actually grab Excel and convert it into kind of like a list view like this? And the answer is, Almost yes. There's only one thing that we need to figure out. I haven't been able to do it yet, but here's the thing. Uh, if I press F1, you will notice that I get this <laughs> grid control. And it looks familiar because it is an Excel grid. Now, we trimmed it down to where you don't have anything else but the grid. You can still, you know, do everything that you can do with Excel. So you can have formulas here. Uh, you know, you can have, if I, yeah, there you go. So you can have formulas. You can do everything you do with Excel. Yeah, like font coloring and shading right. and comments. Everything. And, yeah, the everything. funny thing is that you can hit Control S and it would save a file. So <laughs> again, you, and, and Control F12 would give you the save as dialog. So this is Excel, but trimmed down. So how did we made this? Excel allows you, again, programmatic access to many of its functions. And some of the functions that we were actually defining, we converted them into, we added them to your Excel library. Um, some of them is executing the VBA code, uh, which was amazing, right? In which you pass 
arbitrary VBA code. And you can, one of them is for the show um, object, you can select toolbar, the rebun, and then you set it to false to kind of like remove the rebun. And so to be yeah. very clear here though, so make sure people understand, can you select that code again? The, yeah. the, I think from there to the, to the end. Right. That this. code there is VBA code. Right. So we so here's one of the amazing things we all, we would always tell people, hey, go if you can't find your solution on the forum or not on our our Excel page or whatever, go look in Stack Overflow. Oh, okay. Hey, it's a written in VBA. Usually you can adapt it to Auto Hotkey's COM object. It's not too hard. Here you could literally submit the VBA code. Right. You you just paste it there and yeah. make sure that the quotes are escaped because in V1, at least, you have to escape the quotes like this. But after that, everything, you just copy-paste the stuff and it yeah, usually this, this works just fine, thing. right? Yeah. Right, you can just, or put it in a variable and pass it as a variable, however you want. So this is great. And then after that, we used, for example, these guys here, The I create a function called toggle bars in which you can select different bars like the formula bar you can remove it status bars scroll bars headings and 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 basically as soon as you set one of them to true or false if you let me just um exit the script uh and just reopen it now i just set the headings to true and you will notice now that our code now has the abc at the top of the of the screen and the row numbers so you can show or hide those, the scroll bars. Usually the scroll bars also contain the sheet names at the bottom here. So not only you get the scroll bars here, but you also get the sheet names at the bottom, which yeah. again, you can create new sheets if you want to. Right. And for our client, that's going to actually be very handy because they want right. to have multiple files. So yeah, that's right. Exactly. Again, the status bar and formula bar you can, and we created also these toggle caption so this what it does is that the excel object is actually embedded into a window by default now that window and that's basically the reason why i haven't been able to figure out our little problem this window here is the parent of the control here and what i want to do is kind of like change the parent of the grid to my GUI. So I want to embed it into my GUI. Um, it is doable, I think, but I haven't been able to figure it out, even though I have tried several. Yeah, I haven't tried a few things, but I wasn't successful. But here's the thing. This window here has the caption up there, and we could definitely just remove that caption and just leave you with the grid by itself, which is exactly what I did before. So if I set everything else to false and I run it again, what we get is, you know, I remove the captions, the scroll bars, the everything, and I'm just left with the grid. And that's the part that at some point I would like to make sure that this window that I have there is actually a child window of my GUI which means that then whenever I move my main GUI, like uh, like in this case, whenever I move my main GUI, all the objects move with it. So I could have some buttons and in the middle, I would have the grid, <laughs> the Excel grid, which is, you know, great for many purposes. But yeah, this, this little de detail here that we are that we did it helps us a lot and i could definitely just make buttons and make them stick to this grid so whenever i move it or change the size like the buttons move with it that's another way for me to work it out but sometimes i just want kind of like one big GUI that i could just move around yeah one other thing we should mention is uh the client at first didn't want to do this because they were saying excel was too much overhead takes too long it's too slow and we're like you right. know hey, what if you just have Excel running and just display it, make it visible and not visible, which is stuff we already had in my function library, and we can just toggle that visibility. And it just makes it snappy because you're not starting and stopping it every time. So it, it's really, really simple to do. Right. Um, one of the things is that after we create the GUI, we could definitely just toggle it like this. And if you have a file already open, Right. So let's say that you read a file and you have a big Excel file open here. 
when you're doing this, you're just toggling the fact that it's visible or not. So you're not definitely, um, <laughs> you don't have to reload the whole thing every single time. You can just toggle its visibility and you don't have to have the overhead of- Starting it every time. That's exactly. Yeah. That is right. So um, hopefully you learned something there. Uh, how do you guys handle working with, you know, editing a list? Like, do you grids do you something else? Yeah, grid. Right. So it's not just one item; it's it's a grid of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you learn something here, like the video, please really helps us out. Um, you might want to subscribe. We're the largest auto hockey channel out there, and publish twice a week. And thank you so much. Uh, go to this theautomator.com slash Excel. I have over fifty videos there, tutorials on how to use Excel, plus our Excel library is at the top that you can download for free. So check it out.